This is the Orico NVMe M2 enclosure. It's a USB-C or a USB 3.1 Gen 2 NVMe enclosure that is capable of speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. If you want to learn more about this one and also how fast it can actually go, then stick around because it's TechWiz time. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TechWiz time where I help you save time and money when it comes to gaming and technology. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the Orico NVMe M2 enclosure. Now this little enclosure will allow you to use your M.2 drives externally from your computer. So generally you plug them into your motherboard, but with this little gadget here, you can actually read them and write to them from a USB 3 or USB port. Now full disclosure, Orico did send this one out to me to test and play around with and I have been for the last couple of weeks. Uh, no money has exchanged hands and thoughts and opinions are definitely my own. Now in saying that, let's look at a couple of the features of the Orico NVMe M2 enclosure. Now firstly, you'll notice that you can actually slide this off without needing any tools. So simply you go like that on the heatsink and you're in. And the board slides out really simply. And putting it back together again, all you need to do is slide it and it's back together. How awesome is that? Now the enclosure itself is made out of plastic, however there is an actual heat sink there which will help dissipate some of the heat from an M2 drive. So included in the box is some thermal pads which will actually act as a buffer between the heat sink and the M2 drive. So that's the actual enclosure itself. It is a USB Type-C connection and like I mentioned previously, it is capable of 10 gigabits per second when using a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port. Now obviously you'll need to consult your motherboard or your manual for your computer to see whether you've got a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, but using a USB 3 port, you're still gonna get pretty good speeds and I will get to that when I show you some of the benchmarking, benchmarking shortly. Now give me one second, I'm just gonna grab an M2 drive and actually an NVMe M2 drive because SATA M2 drives don't actually work in this one. So give me a second, I'm just gonna grab an NVMe SSD M2 drive and I'll be back in one second. Okay, so this one here is an Intel 660p one terabyte drive. Really good value, they're going for about $95 on US Amazon at the moment. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description in case you wanna check it out. But I just wanted to show you quickly how you actually insert this in to the drive itself. So you do the slide down on the heatsink Open it up, remove the actual board itself. On an angle, you place the M2 drive into the port, or the slot I should say. Once it's in there nice and firm, you'll notice here that the standoff, it won't actually work until you remove it. So give me one second, I'm just gonna grab the little included screwdriver. Okay, so I'll show you a close up, but there is a little notch in the NVMe module there to fit the little standoff. So you place that in there and then screw it back together. While it's not completely toolless, it is in terms of opening it up and closing it back up again. So that's from there fairly firmly. So we can just place it back into the enclosure and lining it up and sliding it back and it's done. So all in all that took roughly about a minute, like not that long at all. So changing over NVMe drives isn't gonna to be too much of a hassle if you've got a few lying around. Otherwise, just buy a couple of these. So let's talk about speeds for a second because like I mentioned, it is rated at being 10 gigabits per second. In my particular system, and it's not a fresh install of Windows as well, so if, if you're working off a, a fairly fresh install of Windows, not something that's been uh, written to for around two years, then you might get better speeds than me. So take this with a grain of salt. This is just testing on my main platform. I haven't tested it again on a fresh Windows install. So I'll just consult my little notes here. So I did actually test this with two drives. I tested it with the Intel 660p one terabyte drive and also the Samsung 960 Evo drive. So both of those uh, produce very, very similar results. So I'm not gonna show you what they were between them, but I'm talking like a couple of megabytes. There was not much difference at all. So one of the first tests that I ran was Crystal Disk Mark. Now Crystal Disk Mark, for those that aren't aware, is a benchmarking tool specifically for hard drives. So 
it will actually determine how fast it can read and write. It does have other tests as well, but my main concern for this was particularly uh, the read and write speeds. When it came to the read speeds, we're looking at 826 megabytes per second. So that's, that's pretty, pretty fast. It's not up there at the 980 or 1000 megabytes per second, but 826 was quite respectable for this little unit. And again, if you were running a more optimized Windows system, then you might get better speeds than me. Now, in terms of writing to the actual drive, we got speeds of 815 megabytes per second. So again, a very respectable uh, speed coming from an M2 drive, especially an external M2 drive. So that was using benchmarking tools, but then I thought, okay, the, we're better off looking at a real world situation. You're gonna be copying something from or to an M2 drive through a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port. Again, this is what all those tests were made through as well, just so you know, so I was getting the, the maximum speed. So when it came from copying from an internal NVMe drive to the external, we were getting speeds from and then to about 504 megabytes per second. So that's, that's a little bit shy of that initial 800, uh, sorry, no, it's the right speed. So it was 815 megabytes per second. So it shaved a good 300 megabytes per second off that. And, and that's, that's pretty understandable when it comes to real world, real world testing, I should say. So the particular file that I did copy was a 10 gigabyte file. So it gave me enough time to actually get a, a benchmark over that 10 gigabyte file. So next up, what I did is I copied that 10 gigabyte file again from the external NVMe enclosure and I copied it to an internal NVMe drive. And the speed that I got there was 546 megabytes per second. Again, a, a pretty respectable rate there for the external NVMe enclosure. Now, because everyone's not gonna have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port on their computer or laptop, I wanted to actually test it on just a regular USB 3 port. So I did the same test again, but I did it again this time on a USB 3 port, just a standard USB 3 port. And I did test it again with both the Samsung 960 Evo and the Intel 660p M2 drives. And again, the results were very similar. So I'm not gonna mix and match them. I'm just gonna tell you what the Intel one was. So with Crystal Disk Smart again, we've got 434 megabytes, 434 megabytes per second on the write, uh, read speed, sorry. And on the write speeds, we got 456 megabytes per second. So not too bad. When it came to real world testing again, I did the 10 gigabyte file and I did it from the internal NVMe to the external NVMe enclosure. And we got a speed of 331 megabytes per second. And then when I copied it from the external enclosure to the internal NVMe drive, we got a speed of 379 megabytes per second. So again, even operating on a USB 3 port that isn't a 3.1 Gen 2 port, you're going to get some pretty good speeds out of this. So I know I just threw a lot of figures at you there, <laughs> you know, that speeds and benchmarks and all that sort of thing, but I just wanted to show you what this drive was actually capable of. And I did actually test another uh, brand of NVMe enclosure to see if I was gonna get similar speeds to what I got with this drive, and I did. So definitely if, if you're getting faster speeds on your system, then it could be related to the fact that my system has not been freshly installed for quite some time. And I run a lot of different software on my main PC. So again, that could be the main reason. So who do I think this M2 enclosure is for? Well, I think it's for those people that are enthusiasts with technology. Um, they've got a couple of NVMB drives lying around. Maybe they, another, well, here we go. Here's another use case, something that I'm gonna look into a little bit more is you might actually have a large Steam library. And if you've got a large Steam library and you don't necessarily have the space internally for your computer, then this might be the idea for you because you're gonna get good read and write speeds from it and it's not gonna really affect gaming. So it's gonna be the similar to the same performance um, as in, well, somewhere between an SSD and an NVMe drive. So if, if that's something that yeah, that you're looking at, $95 for the Intel 660p for one terabyte, that's a pretty good deal. And then the cost of the enclosure on top of that, you're looking at about 30, $35. 
So roughly you're looking about $130 for a complete external one terabyte fast Steam library that you can run externally. So yeah, that, that's, that's a really good use case there if you're a gamer and you're looking for, yeah, you're looking for something external that you can take your library with you, maybe take it over to a mate's house and yeah, run it from their computer, especially if they've got like a 2080 Ti or something like that. I've only got a 980. Jeez, I've got to get with the times. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, um, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell notification icon too because it really, really helps me out, especially getting that information out to you guys. If you want to get notified in other ways, then I do post regularly on Twitter and Facebook. I try and keep up there um, and let you guys know when I'm releasing new videos. So make sure you jump over and follow me on those platforms. If you like this video, then make sure you give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, give me a thumbs down if you didn't like this. I, it tells me and gives me some indication whether or not I'm doing a good job. If you want to help TechWiz Time grow, then you can do so over on Patreon. Otherwise, if you can't donate for any reason whatsoever, and don't worry, I, I know exactly what that's like. I've just left my job, so I'm trying to do this full time to, to make ends meet. It, yeah, so if, if you can't do it monetarily, but you still want to help out, then you can help transcribe or translate these videos into different languages. There is a link down in the description below. So if you speak something like German or Hindu or any other language out there, French, Italian, you can help by translating this video down in the description. So with that said, thanks so much for everyone's support. I really appreciate it. And as always, imagine, learn, create.